Hosea chapter 3 verse 2 so I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a home half homer of barley according to Leviticus 27 16 that homer or barley is 50 shekels of silver half of a homer would be 75 plus the 15 would be 90 pieces of silver he paid for her it's a little interesting note I know we mentioned before and as you read the Bible the answers are there so remember we talked about the 30 pieces of silver he paid more for her than, than Judas got for Jesus and Judas didn't even keep it 30 pieces of silver was recorded uh, chapter 5 hear ye this O priests now remember, these are, the, these are not the priests of Judah. These are not the Levites. These are Jeroboam's priests, Jezebel's prophets in Israel. And hearken ye house of Israel, and give ye ear, O house of the king. In back to chapter 1, verse 1 mentioned. For judgment is towards you. Okay, before the axe falls. Before God brings upon anybody, a nation, individual, a group of people, he warns them. Israel is getting their warning. It says, judgment is toward you. It's not there yet. It's coming. Because ye have been a snare on Mizpah and a net spread upon Tabor. So they've been a hindrance. They've been troubled. In the last few chapters, especially the last chapter 4, with their religious system. And the revolters. Chapter 9, verse 15. Chapter 1, verse 5. Are profound to make slaughter. Well, that's death. Though I have been a rebuker of them all. God's been rebuking them. But they haven't been listening. They're not getting, giving heed. And you find that today, present, when you've got people in the public ministry and no one listens. So judgment is towards you. I don't care you don't believe in hell. Hell's coming. If the Bible's right, if God is right, if the Lord Jesus Christ is right, without the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will pay for your own sins in hell. You don't want to believe it? Let man be, let God be true and every man a liar. Uh-oh. I know Ephraim. There's those people out there out west. It's what they claim. It's what they say. I didn't say it. They claim to be of Ephraim. So if they claim to be of Ephraim, you better read the Bible. Which they don't. It's funny, you know, they can get, they will give you a free King James Bible that they don't even read. And when you call them up and get your free King James Bible, open up the book of Hosea chapter 4, verse 17, and Hosea chapter 5, and say, hey, have you read the Bible? And they're probably so well versed in the attack of Bible believing Christians, they'll have some fancy dancy answer. They all do. I know Ephraim, and Israel is not hid from me. I know what you guys are doing. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. They think they're hiding from God. And now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom. Now, what's been the whoredom in four chapters, five chapters? Going after other gods, going after idolatry, going after adultery of the God that is not God. Baal. The calves. They're still alive and well. Well, not alive, but you know what I mean. And Israel to defile. You know how many times he's spoken about the kings of Israel, northern tribes, the sins of Jeroboam? And when it talks about over and over the sins of Jeroboam, it was those calves. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. 
That's repentance. If somebody claims to repent and got right with the Lord and did not turn to God, they didn't repent. For the spirit of whoredoms, we talked about that spirit before. There's all kinds of spirits in the Bible. The heir of whoredoms. Is in the midst of them. They have not known the Lord. You know, when it comes to that spirit of air and all that, you realize you breathe the same air that a pig and a rattlesnake breathe? You breathe the air of a dog, a cat. You breathe the air of, of the exhaust of cars, methane. The stuff that you breathe that's in the air. Here is a spirit of whoredoms that's just in the air. And it blocks the Holy Spirit from doing anything. In the pride of Israel, oh, well, that's a bad word in the Bible, does testify to his face. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. Well, falls no good. Judah also shall fall with them. And we've studied that with Ezekiel, with Jeremiah, with Lamentation. Judah never gets right by the actions of Israel. It's almost like God put upon Israel first to teach Judah a lesson. You know, there's one thing, when it, if you've got multiple children, you know, it doesn't work if you've got one. You know what the one thing it does to teach, to, to correct your children? I say children. Is when one sees that another has gotten punished for something, it does refrain them from wanting to do bad and evil. If they're a proper child. If you're proper with, with, with your chastising. Now, if you treat one child better and give them more leeway than the other child, they ain't going to teach you nothing. But Judah was supposed to see what happened to Israel and say, no, I don't want that to happen. Judah was supposed to draw closer to God. And they went further. They shall go with their flocks and with their herds to seek the Lord. But they shall not find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. We read that in chapter 1. When you get to the point that you go to God and God has nothing to do with you. You are in trouble. <coughs> what do you do? First of all, they're not really seeking God. The Bible says no man searches after God. They look for a God that, that's, in, that's in a store. They go down this aisle and all the shelves have a God. And each God has its own little characteristics, its own little trait, its own little, I'll let you get away with this, but I won't, I won't let them get away with that. And you know, I, I'm a Republican God and I'm a Democratic God and I believe the baptism is salvation. I believe the King James Bible is not the word of God. God. You can go down the aisle of God and find whatever you want. And you can say when you're in that aisle of that store, yeah, I'm, search I'm seeking God. Really? A bunch of people two days ago, yeah, two days ago, walk around with ashes on their forehead. Oh, I seek after God. Really? Where do you find that in the Bible? Never mind the mark of the beast and all that. Where do you find God? There's a mark that's given to 144,000. Oh, are you trying to tell me you're Jewish? Are you stealing the Jewish promises? Doesn't the Bible say, Woe unto them that curse the nation of Israel? What they're doing is they're shopping for a God that they like, they want. They can hold. 
that will like their sins, that will love them for who they are. And you can find churches like that all across America, all through the world. There's a church that will just, we welcome all. Really? Warn me before I walk through your church front door. Because if you accept all people, I don't want to be in your church. If you're, if you're that stupid, I wonder who, you, who are you going to put with the Sunday school children. I wonder who you're going to put in the nursery. They shall seek the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. But they're not really seeking with the heart. They're in trouble. And they just want a remedy. That's what they want. They don't want God. Because they wanted God. Verse 4, they will not frame their doings to turn on to their God. Read that with what you just read in uh, 6. They seek the Lord. But they turn on to their God. They won't do it. It's a matter of heart. And you can't just believe anybody, oh, I'm a Christian, oh, I'm saved. You've got to sit down and ask and say, okay, now, now I found this out. I, I, I've tested the waters. And I've gotten to the point where, where I, I say, listen, tell me your testimony now. And I've listened to their testimonies. It ain't biblical. And a few men doing that and then going with the Bible, they turn around and have received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, thinking that they were saved, thinking that they were Christians, thinking that they were right with God. And they weren't. You can't just throw, oh, I'm a Christian. You just can't throw, I'm a saved person. Because they're seeking God. Really? Would God really turn his ne turn His back on people who really love them and want to do right? They're not turning to God with their full, their full heart. They said they shall go with their flocks and with their herds. What about their heart? What about their wives? What about their children? Where are they? Oh, we're just going to bring some animals and, and kill them and sacrifice them. That's all we're going to do. And we read in the previous chapter, well, the priests loved that because that was free food for them. That was ham hock. Well, I can't say ham hock. That was the best hawks, the best part of the meat, the best, the breast and all that. They were enjoying your sin offerings. It was putting meat in the refrigerator if they had refrigerators. They don't. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. It fattened up their covers. It gave them plenty of food. They brought their flocks and their herds, but they didn't bring themselves. They did not bring their wife. They did not bring their children. They didn't bring their heart. All the times that heart is mentioned in the Bible, verse 6 is minus the heart. They have dwelt treacherously against the Lord. So doing that, you think they're just going to come back and come to serve God? For they have begotten strange children. That doesn't mean, you know, an extra arm, an extra head. These are children who have not known God. These are children of probably relationship with, what was the name of the capital of Israel? It was called Samaria. You know where the Samaritan was? By the time you read in Jesus' time, was a half breed Jew that was uh, involved in relationships with the Gentiles. They were outcasts. That good Samaritan was an outcast. He was rejected because he wasn't fully Jewish. They have brought up children to serve Baal and not God. Now shall a Month devour them. Uh, month. Yeah, won't hear, but I don't see what the number is. A month devour them. Thirty days. I know that. I can't find the note. With their portion. Blow ye the coronet in Gibla, and the trumpet in Rimba. Cry aloud at Beth Haven. 
after they, I'll go after you. Play the trumpet, play the cornet after you go, O oh, Benjamin. Oh, there's a there's a uh, there's a tribe that was involved in sodomy and protecting the sodomite. Benjamin is in Judah. Benjamin is, is engulfed by Judah. And he's speaking to, to the southern tribes here. He's speaking outside of Israel. Jeremiah 4 5, it's a battle cry. He's warning Judah, the southern tribe, through Israel. What I'm going to do to Israel is your warning. And by lamentations we saw they didn't give heed. Benjamin, I mean Ephraim shall be made desolate in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel have I made known that which shall surely be. God speaks of surety. The princes of Judah, Judah south, were like them that removed the bond lines territory therefore i will pour out my wrath upon them like water so through hosea god is already warning judah you better get right don't you think what i'm going to do to israel that i'm going to pass you up america needs to teach the old testament the whole bible well, America needs to teach the Old Testament in your public schools to show what God reacts to sin, what God reacts to your conduct towards him. But you know what's come with the public schools? No Bible, no God, no prayer. What happened to Israel? No God, no law, no book of Moses, no prayer to God. You have fallen gods, you're worshiping other gods, and look where they ended up. Where do you think America is going to If God did this to his people, the apple of his eye, what do you think he's going to do to nations like Europe? Countries that have gone against the Jews. England. Germany. Russia. If God has done it to his own people, you better believe he's going to do it to you. Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment. I hate to build a re hate to build a religion on, on that guy. Because he willingly walked after the, the commandment, and that's not God's commandment, that's the commandment of men. So what is that group in, in the West there? What, what commandment do they walk? Do they walk after the Bible or do they walk by something written by man? Another testament of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not authorized by the Holy Spirit. That was written by a by a man who loved other other men's wives. Uh, adulterer. Hasn't we been reading about that in Hosea? Isn't adultery one of the big things in Hosea? And when you steal someone else's wife, isn't that an adultery? That you are killed in a prison by the husbands of those wives? And you say you are of Ephraim? I don't think Hosea is open up at the uh, tabernacle in Utah too often. I don't think any of the Bible is opened up. Therefore... Will I be unto Ephraim as a moth? A little thing that does much damage. And you know what? As far as I know, growing up, when I've seen my mom or my grandma pull something out of the closet that had holes in it, I never saw the moth. I've seen what the moth has done, but I've never seen the moth. And when he gets to business and doing what he does best, he does a lot of damage. 
Matthew 6, 19 and 20. And to the house of Judah, oh, there we go back down south again, as rottenness. How's that? What's rottenness? Decay. Rust. You ever see a broken down barn that hasn't been tended in decades? You see, you see, you know how it's leaning, it's about to fall. The roof is caved in. Well, what happened to Judah? By lamentation. Wasn't it destroyed and broken down and, dis and desolate? When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to Assyria and sent to King Jerob, yet could not heal you, nor cure you of your wound. So Ephraim was sick and he ran to a man, to a doctor, rather than running to God. Doc, give me a prescription. Doc, put me under the x-ray. Now, going to a doctor, wrong? No, Jesus said, listen, they that are sick, need, they need a physician. But anything in your health condition, you ought to pray first. And I've done that. I've got ailments right now of diabetes. I've sat in bed, and I've sat in the seat, and I've sat at work, and I've sat while I'm driving the car. I say, Lord, do you want me to go? Is it time to go to a doctor? Now, Lord, I'm not one of these people, you know, you don't go to a doctor, you don't get shot. I'm not one of those people. But I'm going to seek the Lord and ask him, is it time to go to a doctor? You find healing all through the Bible. A king had boils, and God said, okay, take a lump of figs, put it on that boil, and he recovered. Then there are kings who were in battle, they were, they were struck, and they died. Ephraim, the sin of Ephraim here is they went to a doctor, they didn't go to God. And he didn't really go to a, to a doctor, he went to the king. What can a king do? For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion. I mean... Type, and that ain't the line of the Lord Jesus Christ out of Judah. As a young lion, more energy, strength, speed than an old lion. To the house of Judah. So God is going to allow Satan to attack Ephraim. He's going to allow Satan to attack Judah. Exactly what Satan would rub his hands and say, Thank you, Lord. Getting permission. Like he did with Job. One and two. I, God, even I will tear and go away. Now when you come to the same with Satan and God. I'm only going to give you two places in the Bible. It says one place God told David to number Israel. Then when you get the cross reference to that, it says Satan told David the number of children of Israel. What do you guys say about that? Both can do it. And with Job 1 and 2, God will allow Satan to do things and God will restrict Satan on things. That angel that went through Exodus that night that the Egyptians were killed. It was God allowing it, allowing the deaf angel, Satan, to do his duty. Plain and simple. What the Bible says. I, even I, will tear and go away. Bye. I will take away, and none shall rescue him. So when Judah is destroyed, Jerusalem is destroyed by Babylon. Who helped them? Remember Hosea 5? Hosea is before, long before Judah. Israel hasn't even gone to captivity yet. So you see prophesying already. Hosea warned Judah before Israel's judgment came upon him. I will go and return to my place. 
like Jesus Christ done. A lion, a young lion, a lion on the tribe of Judah. What happens if you are a Jew and you sided with the Antichrist as the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? Don't you think Jesus Christ is going to be even angrier? Is that the word? The fact is you are his people, John chapter 1, and you are going with Satan when you know you're not supposed to? Till they acknowledge their offense. That's the second advent. That's also Daniel. That's also Ezra, Nehemiah. And seek my face. In their affliction, they shall seek me early. Ephesians 4.30 So at one point, they're coming to God and God says, I'm not listening to you. I'm not. Get out of here. God has to tear them up. Another reason why God turns his back and doesn't verse in chapter uh, I mean verse six of chapter five is they gotta get a butt licking. It's like a child you call them into the room, and this is funny, so this happens and they start crying even before you started anything. It's like I haven't even started yet. You're lying. I've got to do what I've got to do because you've done something wrong. And your tears and your, oh, I love you, Daddy, is not going to work. Not according to the Bible. Now, when your hiney is sore and you are thinking about your trespass, and then you come to Dad or you go to, to God the Father and say, you know what, I didn't really appreciate that, but I know it was for my well-being, it was for my well-good that I've done wrong. Then we'll sit down and talk. But even the prodigal son, he had to go through his trials. He had to go through his misery. He had to go dine with the pigs for a while before, you know what? My father ain't that bad. And he humbled himself, saying, you know what? If I just be a servant, never mind a son anymore. I'm not worthy to be called a son. And when Judah will acknowledge and they don't really do it if they're under Ezra and Nehemiah. When you read Daniel, you only you know, on the whole book of Daniel, you only read about four Jewish people. You don't read about any others. You ever notice that? There were no companions of them. There was no group of people. There wasn't masses helping Daniel pray. When it came to prayer, how many people were caught? Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo were also in the political office. They weren't presidents, but they were still in charge. Where were the rest of the Jews? How come when it came down to worshiping that idol that they only called three men? Three men stood up out of the whole group of all the people. Hey, look at those three men over there. They're not bowing down. Where were the rest of the Jews? you got to ask yourself when you read the books of the Bible and come things like that. God had to give them a hard time in Babylon. So when Ezra and Nehemiah came along and they're ready to bring them back, they, they want to get out. They didn't really want to get out of Egypt. Their heart wasn't really with it. They get halfway along, oh, we love the watermelons, we love the leeks. You, you, did you love getting beat? Did you love having your children cast into the river? Well, yeah. It's a lot better than what we're doing now. We love this, this, this white... Man, and other, they're just getting sick and tired of it. We ain't got no water. We ain't got no food. We ain't got no water. We ain't got no food. Moses, who do you think you are? We ain't got no food. We ain't got no water. Man, Moses, what's your problem? Moses, you brought us out here to kill us and this and all that. 
Oh man, look at it. we went in there. There, there, there are giants in there. And there, well, I mean, we can't get no let's go. And the Bible says they got they got a captain. And they were ready to go back. They never really got the true love of God. But when God puts the Antichrist to him and lets him loose, man, that just wakens them up. Jacob, the time with Jacob's trouble is a eye waking experience to those Jews. They will turn to God in blood, sweat, and tears. And then God will listen to him.